Hi guys and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to host your website for free using an online tool called GitHub Pages. At the end of the video I'll also be showing you how to add a custom domain to your GitHub repository. Now I'm just going to show you how my website looks like when it's offline and the files are on my desktop. So I've made a folder here called websplaining.com. I'm going to open that and then I'm going to click index just to show you how my website looks offline. There we go, there's the Websplaining site, which is a simple one-page portal site showing my YouTube, my Instagram, my Twitter, and my TikTok accounts. So there we have that. I'm just gonna close out of this, and let's begin the tutorial, and close out of this too. Okay, so now that we're on our desktop, the first thing you wanna do is open up a web browser. So I have Google Chrome here, I'm just gonna double click it. You wanna to navigate to www github.com. Okay, once you're on the landing page of GitHub, you're going to need to sign up if you don't have an account. So if you don't have an account, you'll need to enter a username, an email address, a password. You then click sign up for GitHub. You'll get an email. You'll have to verify your identity and you'll be brought back to this page where then you can sign in with your username and password. Now I've already created an account, so I won't be doing any of that. So let's click sign in. Okay, and there's my details there. I'm just going to click sign in again. Okay, now you're on the main page of GitHub and you don't have any repositories. So GitHub is very nice. It gives you on the left hand side a brick green button to create your first repository. Let's click that. Okay, now you're on the create a new repository page. So there are very specific things that you need to add to the repository name to create it into a GitHub web pages name. So the first thing you'll need to do is you'll need to give it a name. So I'm going to call it Websplaining. And you'll need to add the following dot github dot io. Okay, once you have that done, you have the option of including a description, making it public or private. You need to have it public to, so that it can be used online and whether or not you want to initialize this repository to README. I always do, so I'll click, I'll tick that. You also have the option of adding a license. I'm going to leave that blank. I'm just going to create the repository. Okay, there you go. The repository has created, and the only thing it contains is the read.md file. So once that's done, you want to simply upload your files. So let's click the Upload Files button. Now you can drag files here to add them to your repository. Now there are other various tools that you can use that you can install onto your desktop or by using Git where you can transfer the files more easily. However, for this video, because the web page is very small, I'm just going to use the interface of GitHub. So let's minimize this and let's open up our folder. Once we have a folder, let's just minimize this too. And then let's open up back the web page and simply highlight and drag these files into the websplaining.github.io repository. As you can see, the files are uploading. Let's give it a few seconds. It shouldn't take long because it is a very small portal one-page website. Okay, now that the files have been uploaded, you can simply scroll down to the bottom and you can add your commit changes if necessary by giving it a title and added a description. I'm just going to keep it the way it is by default and then I'm going to click commit changes. Okay, GitHub is processing your files. It will take a very short time because our website is very small. Let's give it a few minutes. Okay, and there we have it. The GitHub repository and all the files needed to create our website have been uploaded. Now we'll need to meddle with the settings of the GitHub repository. So, navigate to the top right here and click Settings. Once you're here, you'll want to scroll down. Okay, so now that you're on the GitHub Pages section, you can see that your site is published at the following link. It will be in green. Let's click that link. And as you can see, 
Our website looks very nice and it's exactly like the files that we had on the desktop. We get a nice URL that GitHub generates for us, websplaining.github.io. However, let's say if you want to add a custom domain to this GitHub repository. So let's just close out of this and get back to our repository. So as you can see here, it says custom domain. And it says custom domains allow you to serve your site from a domain other than websplaining.github.io. So this is all dependent on your custom domain's name. So let's log into my Namecheap account and I'll show you my custom domain's name and then we'll add it to here to match exactly what it's meant to be. So let's create another tab. You want to go to www.namecheap.com. Now this is my preferred domain registrar, just out of preference and because it is actually very cheap. If you want to buy a domain name on Namecheap.com, I'll put my affiliate link in the description where you can sign up. I'll make a bit of money and you'll save a bit of money. So if you don't have an account, you'll want to click sign up. And then you'll want to enter in a username, your password, your name and all your other details. Again. You'll then need to go to your email address and confirm your account. I'm just going to go back here because I already have an account and I'm just going to simply click sign in. As you can see, I've already populated my login details and I'm just going to click sign in. So once you're in your Namecheap dashboard, you want to scroll down and select the appropriate domain name. Now, as you can see, the web explaining domain name is right here and you just want to click manage. Okay, and once you're here, you're gonna to wanna to scroll down to where it says name servers. Now here you wanna make sure that the one selected is actually Namecheap basic DNS. You don't want the web hosting DNS and you don't want the custom DNS. If it is on a custom DNS, for example, you wanna switch it to the Namecheap basic DNS. So once that's done, there'll be a check mark here that you can click it to save your changes. Once that's done, you wanna to go to the top and then you want to select advanced DNS. Once this loads up, you'll want to add a few records. Now the first records we're going to add are A records. So you want to click add new record and you're going to select A record. Now I'll include the records that I have here in the notepad in the description below and also a link to the GitHub tutorial of how to set up your GitHub pages using a custom domain name. Okay, so you can see here I have two IP addresses, one, two, three, and four. You wanna copy each of these into a separate A record. The host will be the at symbol and your value will be those IP addresses. So let's paste in the first IP address and click the tick symbol. Let's add a new record. Again, it's an A record, an at symbol, and then the second IP address here. Keep it at automatic and click the tick symbol. And the same again. Now I'm just hitting control V, that's why you can't see me copying and pasting. I'm using shortcuts on the keyboard. Again, click the tick symbol. And the last one, add record, a record, the at symbol, and then the IP address. And click the tick symbol. Okay, so now that all the A records have been added, you'll need to add one more record, and that's gonna be the C name record. So you'll need to click add new record and you'll want to select C name. So for the host, you want to put in www. And for the target, what you're going to put in here is the address of your repository. So for example, my repository is called websplaining.github.io. So the only thing that will change here in this parameter is the name of your repository. Now remember, mine is websplaining.github.io. Yours will be different, but the .github.io will be the same. Click the tick symbol. Okay, 
With that last record, we're completely done with Namecheap now. We don't actually need to be here anymore, so I'm gonna click out of it. Now, it may take 48 hours for everything to propagate, so please be patient if all the changes don't take effect immediately. So let's close out of our Namecheap account. Now that you're back on the GitHub pages settings, you wanna to navigate to where it says custom domains. Here, we're going to populate the box. Now, what you need to decide from the start is, are you going to be using your Apex domain name, which is, for example, would be websplaining.com, or are you going to be using a subdomain name, such as www.websplaining.com? So something before your Apex domain name. So for me, I like to have the www. So in the custom domain section, you will add the www. Now, if you don't want that, you will add in the Apex domain name without a subdomain. So let's do that now. So I'm going to type in www.websplaining.com and I'm going to hit save. Now this will link GitHub pages with Namecheap's records that you have set. Now let's scroll back down to where it says GitHub pages again. So as you can see, now we have a text in blue and it says your site is ready to be published at https colon slash slash www.websplaining.com. And as you can see, the HTTPS has also been activated. Now, it's quite possible that because I had this repository created previously that I've automatically got the HTTPS enforced. However, you may need to check this box to activate HTTPS. Okay, so let's check our live website by clicking this link here. And there we go. Our website, websplaining.com, www.websplaining.com, has been published and is now live hosting our files. I'm just gonna go back here and explain one further detail. So as you can see, we're using the subdomain name, so a www dot in front of the Apex domain name. Let's scroll to the top and then go to the top right here and click your profile. Once you're on your profile, click repositories and then click the websplaining.github.io repository. Now, of course, remember this repository will have a different name to mine. Only the .github.io will be in common. Click it. And let's look at our files. And as you can see here, there's a C name file. Now, whatever is populated in the C name file is very important. I'll show you right now why. So let's click C name. Now, remember, this is populated for you. You won't need to do anything. You can see that in this file, www.websplaining.com has in fact been added to the C name file. Now, that is exactly what we placed in the custom domain text box on our GitHub pages section in our settings. So I just want to remind you, if you add www. it will be added here as well as so. Now, if you were to just add websplaining.com into the text box in the custom domain section settings of your GitHub pages, then websplaining.com will be the only thing that's populated too. This is crucial because on GitHub pages, you can only have one SSL certificate per domain name. So you can either cover www.websplaining.com or the Apex domain name, websplaining.com, not both via HTTPS. This piece of information is very crucial to sub webmasters who want to cover via SSL, both the Apex domain and all the other subdomain names. So you need to know on GitHub, you can only cover one or the other and not both. If you would like to have the ability that covers both the Apex domain name and the subdomain names for free, then I recommend Netlify, which is a new up and coming web hosting service similar to GitHub pages. All right, guys, with that explanation out of the way, I'm just gonna copy my URL, paste it in the box, and I'll leave you on that note. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. If you liked this video, please give it a like. 
subscribe, it really helps grow my channel, and leave a comment, and I'll get back to you. If you have any questions, please leave a comment too. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.